This year we're celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Economic Journal, one of the oldest economic journals in the world. What we really wanted to do with this anniversary issue was to celebrate the breadth and depth of topics that had been covered in the journal and the relevance they had to today's policy debate. Becker's paper on a theory of the allocation of time has spawned an enormous amount of work in economics on understanding and thinking about the way households take decisions, on the way they allocate time within the household, and on thinking of households not only as expending resources, but producing resources, for example, making meals, educating children, that type of thing. I'm here today with Bob Pollack, and Professor Pollack participated in one of the sessions, 50 Years of Home Production and the Allocation of Time, celebrating and discussing the work of Gary Becker. It's a paper in which he really developed the household production model. For example, I'm now working on investment in children, which I think of as a production process where mother's time and father's time are inputs. Money is an input. Parental education plays a role. I think of that as a production function. Yes. And so the important questions that allowed us to answer are all the questions about family dynamics, family investment, how families spend money. What Becker contributed to this was the notion that there is production inside the household and that we needed to think about the allocation of time within the household rather than simply the allocation of time between the market and the household. Becker's contribution is not empirical results in particular areas, but a way of thinking about the world. And that's been extremely important and enormously valuable. Has this work been as accepted as broadly outside of economics, say in sociology, as it has within economics? What do the sociologists think is great about this, and what do they object to, and others? The sociologists I know are very much influenced by Becker and his work on the allocation of time. And I think the involvement of economists has also been important in terms of the collection of data. Yeah. That time use data are now much more available than they were when Becker wrote this paper. For example, the availability of the American Time Use Survey is really quite recent. And there are data sets on time use for other countries, the Australian data being particularly good. And I think that reflects to some extent Becker's influence. So in your 2002 paper on Becker, you say, I have been one of Becker's most persistent critics. So what are some of the most compelling and penetrating criticisms of, of his work? I, you talk about his auxiliary assumptions, for, for one. It seems to me one of the interesting things about Becker's work is the focus on traditional nuclear families. This isn't just Becker. This is something that really dominated economic thinking about the family. I have a book with Jerry Behrman and Paul Taubman, we published uh, in 1995, in which we assumed children are born to married parents who stay married while the children grow up and who invest in the children's human capital. That kind of assumption is no longer tenable. I think economists have been very slow to get on board with that set of notions, to think about uh, cohabitation, for example, and about non-marital fertility. There's very little in economics about this. And in the United States now, 40% of births are non-marital births. 30% of births to mothers who are non-Hispanic whites are non-marital births. That seems to me the, the next generation of questions for the economics of the family, thinking about these complex families you anticipated my next question. I was going to say a lot of graduate students read my blog, and is this still a great area for graduate students to get into? Are there any questions left? And there certainly are. There so. certainly are. But I think the interesting questions are very much on the boundary between economics and sociology and empirical sociology, that this is an area where the demographers are really our best friends, yeah. uh, that they know things we don't know. I co-chaired a network for the MacArthur Foundation on the family and the economy uh, for about 10 years. And I just learned an enormous amount from participating in a network with sophisticated sociologists who just knew things that I didn't know. And that has really shaped my research over the last uh, 15 or 20 years. <laughs>